Party peoples of the interwebs, this is an impromptu car vlog, some news that you probably didn't hear yet, and the reason for which you probably didn't hear it yet, unless you follow me, you've heard of it. The reason for which you haven't heard it yet is probably because it doesn't make the object of the news story look bad. In fact, it might make the object of the news story look good, which is why the mainstream media is ignoring it like the plague. We're going to get to it. At the end of this video, there's going to be a six minute plus unedited video of Chris Pavlovsky, CEO of Rumble, testifying before Congress yesterday, something which many of you might not know has occurred because that too has not been widely reported on, testifying before Congress on the risks of censorship online, testifying how foreign countries out there have been going after Rumble, Twitter as well, other social media companies to censor, to coerce censorship, to coerce taking down of accounts that they don't like for whatever the reason. Okay, so check out that at the end of this video, it's magnificent. But some of you might not have heard this news, and it's wild if you Google it, Rumble has been blocked in Russia. There's a certain element of irony about this because Rumble had to pull out of France because they refused to withdraw to deplatform RT at the request of the French government. Recall, the French government, I think it was in 2022, said, yeah, Russia television doesn't really abide by our standards, our norms. They put out Russian propaganda, and it's very important that we suppress Russian propaganda in the context of this Ukraine-Russian war. And they asked Rumble to take down RT, and Rumble, Chris Pavlov, said, no, we're not doing that. They're not breaking the law. They're not breaking any rules. And we are not going to become the mouthpieces of your corrupt government, coercing censorship of your political, ideological enemies, adversaries, even if you are at war proxy war. So Rumble said, no, we're just going to pull out of France. Now, this is not a massive market for Rumble. So from a business perspective, at least from a branding perspective, from a business perspective, dollars and cents, you know, it's not the biggest market. It's not the end of the world. From a branding perspective, it's very important. And it's, I dare say, invaluable. Because if the free speech platform starts to bow to the demands of corrupt governments to censor uh, channels, to censor users, because the government doesn't like them, despite the fact that they haven't broken any laws, violated any rules of Rumble, well, what is Rumble anymore except for a mouthpiece of those governments? So Chris Pavlovsky says, I like to say, digital middle finger, we're not adhering to your demands, we're pulling from France. This has caused a little bit of, you know, problems for some of our viewers, because I do have, I won't say a substantial portion of viewers from France, but I have enough, uh, because maybe the French connection to Quebec, they can only access Rumble with a VPN or they can, you know, come get us on vivabarnslaw.locals.com. That's old news. The new news that you might not have heard, it happened over a month ago, although I think Rumble only recently discovered it. They were taken off, blacklisted, removed from Russia. Why? Because the Russian government asked Rumble to take down, to censor a few accounts. I don't know which accounts in particular. Now, they're not political in nature, all of them. Some of them are political accounts. Others, apparently one of them had to do with marijuana. So it might be political adjacent, but it's not like outright political takedown. Anybody who's praising Zelensky, praising Ukraine, criticizing Putin. They asked Rumble to suppress a few accounts in Russia. Rumble said, no, they're not breaking the law. They're not breaking our rules of service. And we're not going to be the mouthpiece to a corrupt government. And then Rumble is taken down in Russia. This is all occurring at the same time that you got the Brazilian government pressuring Elon Musk and Twitter to suppress, to deplatform people, accounts uh, that were involved with related to their January 6th when Bolsonaro lost and then, you know, rioters, protesters took over government buildings. They want to fabricate their own January 6th. But the um, Supreme Court Justice, their Morales, asked Twitter and Elon to take down certain accounts that were related to their January 6th. I forget what date that occurred on. And Twitter said no. To which they said, well, we're going to investigate your company now. We might allegedly, according to Elon Musk, arrest some of your employees who are operating in defiance of this order from the Supreme Court Justice Morales, apparently the most corrupt and the most powerful guy in Brazil. So this is a global war on social media big tech. Pavlovsky testifies before Congress yesterday, delivers a beautiful opening statement, and then puts out a few tweets, which you can go find on his Twitter account, saying, we have been blocked in Russia because we refuse to adhere to the demands of this government, whereas YouTube and Google still seem to be doing business there. What did they acquiesce to in order to remain in Russia? We don't know. They haven't answered the question. What is amazing, what is truly stunning, is the absolute media silence on this banning, removing of Rumble from Russia. Remember back in the day, 
Rumble was accused of being a pro-Putin, pro-Russia shill. They were doing the dirty work, spreading propaganda, misinformation, rushing disinformation because they refused to deplatform RT. Now they get blocked by the very same country. There's no, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. They didn't do anything to favor or disfavor Russia in particular. They did it. Chris did it out of principle. And now he was asked to violate that same principle by the country uh, that owns RT that he did not remove out of principle. And now he's removed from that country. Why is the media dead silent on all of this? Maybe because it doesn't make Rumble look bad and it actually makes Rumble look good. Maybe they're silent on this because it makes YouTube look like the government hacks that they are doing the political bidding of whatever country demands of them that they remove, censor, or do whatever. We know YouTube's been doing it. We know they've been doing it in America. We know that Twitter, pre-Elon Musk, was doing it at the request of intelligence agencies. We know that. So why is YouTube still operating in these corrupt countries and Rumble is excluded? Maybe because one has principles and the other one doesn't. Why is the media silent on all of this? Maybe because one has principles and the other one doesn't. And maybe because the one they've been demonizing, portraying as the villain in this story, is actually the hero that it is, and the ones they've been depicting as the heroes are actually the villains that they are. All right, I better get in there and do my live bit with Dr. Drew, if you're watching this in the future, let me know what you think. It's going to be on, what day is it today? Wednesday at 3 o'clock live. We're going to be talking AstraZeneca, etc. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button on whatever platform you're on. Viva Fry on Rumble. The Viva Fry on Twitter. VivaBarnesLaw.Locals.com for the bestest above average community anywhere. And now enjoy the wise words of Mr. Chris Pavlovsky, CEO of Rumble. Peace. Booyah! Chairman Smith. Ranking Member Wild and members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to come before you today to discuss the importance of protecting the freedoms of speech and expression. My name is Chris Pavlovsky. I'm a native of Toronto, Canada, and the chairman and CEO of Rumble. When I founded Rumble in 2013, incumbent platforms had become beholden to large creators, brands, and large corporations. Rumble provided an alternative for small and independent creators to speak their minds, express their opinions, own their narrative, build communities, and maximize their earnings. Our company was founded on a mission to protect a free and open internet, as we believe everyone benefits when there is a diverse marketplace of ideas, opinions, and dialogues. In late 2020 and into 2021, we realized the power of our mission as millions of users followed creators to the emerging platform with little to no marketing. Some of Rumble's largest creators, including former Congressman Devin Nunes, Dan Bongino, Glenn Greenwald, and former Democratic presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard also joined the platform during this time. As a result, Rumble saw its average monthly active users increase dramatically from 1.6 million in the third quarter of 2020 to 36 million in the third quarter of 2021. In other words, we saw an increase of 22 and a half times the number of users in just one calendar year. In September of 2022, Rumble successfully went public, re relocating our headquarters to the United States and trading on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol RUM. RUM. We've expanded our video content into new verticals like sports, lifestyle, hip hop, and video gaming. Beyond the video sharing platform, Rumble now offers the Rumble Advertising Center, Rumble Studio live streaming software, and the Rumble Cloud. Freedom of speech and freedom of expression are the cornerstones of a democratic society. I know that's not a foreign idea to the members on this subcommittee who have witnessed these rights used to protest tyrannical governments around the world and inequalities here in the United States. Freedom of expression is so important that not only is it the first amendment to the United States Constitution, but it is also Article 19 in the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Without these freedoms, we may have never learned the stories of Frederick Douglass during the abolition movement in the 1830s, or witnessed the civil rights movement of the 1960s, the women's rights movements of the 1970s, or the Arab Spring in the early 2010s. It is extremely troubling to me that in 2024, I have to come before the US Congress to testify that these fundamental rights are being threatened. For years, we saw platforms shadow ban ideas they did not agree with. It was subtle suppression of ideas and opinions that did not fit the norm as dictated by algorithms. Today, the censorship we see is much more overt. 
Governments are acting in ways we only imagined happening 50 to 60 years ago, openly asking platforms to censor and take down disfavored content. They are back in the business of thinking they know what's best, dictating and controlling conversations and stripping the human right to speak and share freely. These are not theoretical fears. These, are thing, these things are happening, and I know this personally as the CEO of a platform that receives demands from governments around the world. One of the first instances of government censorship we experienced did not come as a surprise, as it came from communist China. Communist governments often crack down on a variety of freedoms, including freedom of expression. However, we were surprised in 2022 when we received a request from the French government to block certain news sources. People can certainly question the trustworthiness of news sources, but it should not be any government's job to selectively eliminate access to information. Rather than comply with the French government's request, we simply disabled the access to the platform in France and challenged the legality of this demand. To be clear, Rumble has a strong set of content guidelines under our terms and conditions, but the content the French government was asking us to censor did not violate any of our terms. Instead, it was regarding Russian news outlets. Earlier this year, we received requests from the Brazilian government to remove certain creators from our platform. Again, the content did not violate our terms and conditions, but instead shared opinions that were unpopular in Brazil at the time. Rumble made a very tough decision not to comply with the government's request. As with France, we chose to disable access for our users in Brazil while we challenged the legality of the Supreme Court's demands. It does not stop there. Just last month, we received requests from New Zealand and Australia to censor politically unpopular content. Countries in every hemisphere, all of the members of the United Nations, are no longer upholding the human right to freedom of expression. This is getting out of control, and it should alarm everyone in this room. As this committee knows, the United States is involved in so many initiatives to protect democracy around the world, but when it comes to defending the freedom of speech and protecting American businesses who attempt, who attempt to uphold this right in Brazil, the United States has been silent. It cannot remain so. It does not matter which platform hosts the content. Today it is Rumble, yesterday it was X, but tomorrow it could be the New York Times. The platform shouldn't matter. The universal right to freedom of speech and expression, the core of Western democracy, is at stake. America needs to step up and take a leading role. Rumble will never back down from our mission. We are the tip of the spear in this fight, and we relish that. We urge everyone, especially the US State Department, to join us. I'll close with one final thought. Every totalitarian regime that has crushed the rights of ind individuals has sought to control what people can say and hear. It's never the good guys doing the censoring. If the United States won't stand up for freedom of speech, who will? Thank you again for the opportunity to be with you today. I look forward to taking your questions.